Anyway, <coughs> uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about point of view. Um, and point of view is basically who's telling the story. Uh, and in fiction, point of view is very important because who's telling the story affects what you know in the story. The character you choose to tell the story might know some things, but they may not know everything. Other characters may have a different point of view, and you might miss out on that point of view. So point of view is very important. Um, in a first-person story that's using I, you only get one character's point of view. I did this. I thought this. I went to the store. Um, you only get one person. And you can only be only be where that person is. So for instance, if you know, uh, if you're stuck with that one person, then you can't tell what's going on on another part of town um, because you have to stay with them because they can't teleport out of their body and go to that other part of town. Um, I tends to bring you closer to the uh, emotions and feelings and thoughts of the person. Um, and that's one reason sometimes people will choose uh, I first person versus third person limited, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Another thing with per first person is it includes stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness is a type of writing where you get inside the head of the character. So whatever the character thinks, that's the um, thoughts that you get. Um, a famous example of this would be uh, William Faulkner is a character who does a lot, a writer who does a lot with point of view. He has a book called uh, Sound and the Fury. And the book is split up into four different sections. The first section is told by this character named Benji. Benji is 30 years old, um, but mentally he's only developed to about the level of a three-year-old. Um, in some ways, in some ways, he's still uh, at about a one-year-old level. He has a pretty limited vocabulary. He can't tell between past and present. Um, so if he has a memory or a flashback, it's going to be um, present tense. The whole thing is in sentence fragments um, or, or run-ons, just one long run-on. Um, if you want to be more specific, it, it gets very confusing um, because it's just the thoughts that go through his head. The next section in the book is from the point of view of his brother, Quentin. Um, Quentin is schizophrenic, and some of the characters he talks to aren't real characters. As a reader, you have no way of knowing that at the time. Um, so, <laughs> it... Uh, it's more of a question of, um, uh, you can't really tell which characters he's talking to that are real and which characters he's talking to that are fake. Um, in fact, you believe that they're all real until you get to the end of the story um, and find out what's going on with him. Um, and so that makes it very difficult because you don't really know what's going on because you only get what's in his head. You don't get other people's opinions of him. You don't get what other people are saying. You only get the thoughts in his head and how he's reacting. Um, so stream of consciousness can be really interesting and creative and unique. It can also make a story very difficult depending on how you use it. Um, we is basically representing the community or the city, kind of the values of a group of people. We is very rarely used in writing um, as a point of view. Um, third person is um, he, she, they, the names of the characters. Uh, there's three different ways to do third person. One is limited. Limited is where you stay with one character. He did this, he went to the store. You can tell one character's thoughts. He thought this, but only the one character. Um, you physically are stuck with the character. Omniscient is where you can get into all of the different characters' heads. He thought this, but his mother thought differently. Um, his girlfriend thought this, and her sister thought something else. You can move away, move from one place to a different place. Um, Objective is kind of a fly-on-the-wall approach. 
in writing, in fiction, one of the things that separates fiction from something like drama or a movie is that in a movie, you only get to observe the characters. In fiction, you can tell a character's thoughts and get into their head. With objective point of view, um, you can't get into any character's head. It's like a movie. You just watch what ha the action and watch what happens. Uh, this is the one writer who uses that very effectively is um, Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway's stories were all very much objective, fly on the wall. You get what characters say, you get what characters do, but you never find out what any characters think. Um, he had this, what he calls the iceberg approach, which is if I tell you what a character does and what characters say, you have all this part that below it for readers to interpret what the characters think and what the characters feel. Um, another, the last point of view is second person. Second person is you. It's, it's rarely used, um, especially outside of choose your own adventure novels. Um, that seems to be the place where it would probably be most used. Uh, but it, it's uh, very rarely used, and mostly because it's difficult to be successful and write a full-length story, or especially a novel in second person, um, that remains consistently successful. For a very short piece, it could be useful. Uh, but it's difficult to make it work with something longer. All right, thank you.